This is Accurate TV News. Where you get your news on time, on point, and online. Police recover stolen licensed gun in St. Andrew, manhunt on for robbery. The police in the St. Andrew South Division are on the hunt for robbers who held up a licensed firearm holder and stole his gun along with money and other valuables. The man reported that he was on Woodhaven Avenue on Wednesday afternoon when he was robbed by men traveling in a Nissan Latio motor car. While at the Duhaney Park Police Station making a report, the man received an alert that an ATM transaction was declined from a bank card that was among the items stolen from him. The police acted on this information and went to the location where the failed transaction was made. The police reported that on their arrivals, a motor vehicle was seen and men ran from the car on the approach of the lawman. The was searched and a cold .45 pistol was recovered, as well as keys, a cell phone and other items, according to the police. The vehicle was also seized by the police. Investigations are ongoing to find the perpetrators. Man scams job seekers out of $1 million. A man who scammed $1 million from unsuspecting individuals under the guise that he could secure overseas employment for them was sentenced to two years in prison at hard labor. Senior Parish Judge Laurie Han Cole Montague on Tuesday chided the defendant Nicholas Bryce when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court to be sentenced on 21 counts of obtaining money by means of false pretense and 8 counts of operating an overseas job agency without a license. What you have done is you have taken advantage of poor, vulnerable persons in this society especially against the backdrop that we are operating within a pandemic but what a lot of persons fail to pay attention to is the sacrifices that are made by persons a lot of persons have to borrow they have to beg it and there are some persons who demand themselves they swallow pride to get it with the hope of a better life the judge said in one instance a complaint told Bryce that she was seeking a job as a waitress and he told her she should pay a registration fee of $9,000 and was later given a receipt. On March 17, 2021, the complainant said she was instructed to pay $11,500 for a COVID test, which she did and was also given a receipt by Bryce. On another occasion, the complainant visited the agency's office at Malines Road and handed over her documents and was told to pay 40000 to secure a work permit. She was given a receipt and was told her application would be processed. However, when she started experiencing problems with getting a work permit, she asked Bryce for a refund. The matter was reported to the police after he failed to pay over the money. So when I consider the statement that is to be passed, it must be a sentence that send the right message. The senior jurist indicated. On each count of obtaining money by means of false pretense, the 29-year-old was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment at hard labor. In relation to the count of operating an overseas job agency without license, Bryce was sentenced to six months imprisonment at hard labor. The sentences are to run consecutively. She also made a restitution order that Bryce is to repay $1.4 million to the complainants. Two bodies found in car. 
The St. Catherine South Police have launched an investigation to find the persons responsible for the murder of two men whose bodies were found inside a Toyota Pro Box in a section of Portmore Villas. They have been identified as Andre Dixon, 25, and Ricardo Gardner, 48, both of homestead address in Spanish Town. Reports are that at 1 p.m., residents of Portmore Villa Boulevard observe a parked car in the area. The police were called to the scene and initial check revealed that the vehicle was occupied. The bodies of the two men were spotted after further checks. The police theorized that the men were killed elsewhere and dumped at the location. A number of residents from the community have expressed shock at the gruesome scene. The number of the two men brings to three the number of homicide in the division within 24 hours following the murder of an unidentified man in Old Harbor. Licensed firearm holder shoot at would-be attackers. A 16-year-old boy is facing firearm charges after being identified as one of two individuals who accosted a licensed firearm holder on May 31st. Reports are that at 8.30 p.m., the teen and another male traveling on a motorcycle approached a licensed firearm holder who was in the process of closing his gate at a Kingston 20 address. The motorcyclist allegedly turned off the headlamp on the vehicle. The pillion reportedly got off the bike with a firearm in hand, instructing the man not to move. The licensed firearm holder pulled his weapon and discharged at his attackers who escaped. The teen later turned up at hospital with gunshot wounds. He was subsequently pointed out during an identification parade. He was later charged with intent to rob an illegal possession of a firearm following an incident on Tuesday, May 31. Meanwhile, a 15-year-old is facing housebreaking and larceny charges after he broke into a man's house in Gulf, Norwood on June 10. The teen, who is from Shantytown District Paradise in Norwood, was seen inside the man's yard with a bag. The homeowner was summoned and the teen was apprehended. The bag was searched and several building items including a sander, grinder and jackhammer valued at $150,000 were found inside. Further checks reveal that the teen gained entry to the man's house by removing board louvre windows. The police were summoned and the teen subsequently charged. His court date is to be finalized. Police find bodies along Innswood Dirt Road. The bodies of two men were discovered along the Innswood Main Road in St. Catherine on Tuesday. The deceased, who are yet to be identified, were found near a cricket complex that is being constructed along the roadway. It is reported that explosions were heard about 6.30 a.m. and the police were subsequently called. When the police arrived, it was reported that the men were discovered suffering from gunshot wounds. Investigators removed several spent shell casing from the scene. A senior investigator told the Star that the deceased are from Point Hill community in St. Catherine.